Okay, this is not really an NES RGB update, but it is related. Uh, it's been something I've been wanting to show everybody for a long time. This is the new 3D panel. 3D printed replacement rear, rear panel with integrated Super Nintendo multi out connector and a hole for a new AC port. I'll get some better close up shots of this here in a minute. But I finally got uh, a customer that's going to have it installed on his top loader, so it's perfect time to make the video. Um, first impressions are really good. I mean, I am quite impressed. Uh, I've watched a bunch of 3D printing videos, uh, MakerBot, stuff like that, and the first thing you always notice is it looks layered. Well, this is a different process. It uses powder instead of those uh, filaments that you see on the MakerBots and stuff. So it's extremely smooth, but it almost looks like it's a molded piece that's been sandblasted. I mean, it's just got just a, a, a very minimal texture to it. But to the touch, it's very smooth. Um, very strong. I was really surprised how strong this thing is. I mean, that was always my big concern about 3D printed stuff is how strong it actually was, but it would take some serious effort to break this thing. Um, and of course, it's super, super white. And if I kind of mock it up in the back of a top loader shell here, you'll see that it is a huge color difference. So that's like its major drawback right now because the powder process is white only for now. But the, the guys that are having this made, Helder and, or Hel, yeah, I forget their names, Buffalo Wing and Helder, um, they have a thread on Assembler Games. Uh, I found out about it, I think, through the Shmups thread for the NSRGB. Contacted them, ordered two of these, one for me to review and one for another guy that absolutely wanted it, had to have it. Um, I do have an order in for a panel mount version also, which will be perfect for putting into the front loader. Um, the way I do it now is, it, it, it's fine, it's just, it's more work and it may or may not come out looking very well um, you know, because I have to cut that weird hole with the key on the top by hand and sometimes it just doesn't come out as perfect but this will always look much much better so I'm, I'm excited to get those going but I think it was going to be a couple more weeks before they talked to the printer or got the order put in or something like that I believe this one was right around forty dollars and you know that's that's a bit pricey for what it is but I'm hoping it was just because it's it's still kind of prototype testing stage you know if they were putting in orders for you know over a hundred or more it might, the cost might come down a lot quite a bit but you know get them printed and it'll be it's gonna be easier to install too that's one thing it may cost more up front than the Super Nintendo connector. Like I have some for sale for 20 bucks if you want to go that route. But this thing cost 40 and I was charging 40 to install the Super Nintendo Super Nintendo connector into the original rear panel and uh, I'm only going to charge like 20 bucks to install this thing cuz it's, you know, it's unsolder the old panel and bolt this one in and that's one of its main benefits is because that AC adapter port is no longer integrated into this panel it can be removed just by removing the two bolts from the bottom that's pretty awesome actually uh, the circuit board right here also has its own bolt so three bolts and the panel will slide out the back if you want to paint it you know down the road they get this uh, I think they're using automotive vinyl dye or something to paint these and I've not actually seen a tutorial yet on how to do it, but once they figure it out, then I'll probably do my other one here. But this one's going out to the customer right away, and I already told him, I said, you know, a few screws and you got it out, you can paint it yourself. So, I'm going to 
I'm going to install this one, but uh, I'm going to get some close-up shots of it first, break out the macro lens, and uh, talk about it a little bit more. Very cool. I mean, uh, this hopefully this will start, uh, you know, a miniature revolution in all of our modding practices. You know, being able to 3D print stuff like this is awesome, you know. Uh, screw vacuum forming, all that kind of stuff, you know, you know, uh, build your... Uh, model in, a, in some kind of 3D software and just have it sent off and have it 3D printed, you know. That's super cool. You don't even have to have your own 3D printer. You know, you can, there's, I can't remember what it's called now, but there's places out there where you can just send your stuff in, much like PCBs, you know, design your PCBs, send your files in, and then in a few weeks you can get your PCBs. Well, it's the same thing with 3D printed stuff now, so very cool. This is like just the beginning of what's going to happen with this kind of stuff. Really neat. Hey, there's a bit of a close-up shot for you. If I can throw in the back of the top loader panel there, just so you can see there is a huge difference in color. Hopefully we'll get that uh, straightened away sometime, sometime soon. The lettering, something I would have thought for sure would have came out poorly, came out really, really good. And if you kind of look, you can kind of tell just a little bit that you can kind of see some layering. It's just more like a shadow effect. If you really look at the flat surfaces, but it's not enough to, to really, but especially if you, after you paint this, it's not enough to bother you. And let's see the the circuit board. I already got one undone over here. Um, I've had some issues. I've already expressed with them. I think they need to bevel the edge on that just so that when you insert your, your cord into the connector it's not hitting that hard edge right there just make it easier to insert I would prefer gold but I'm sure this will last plenty long and I believe yeah, the, one of the sides is labeled and it's the same pin out obviously but one thing I didn't notice until later was is the the screw hole is offset so that you can only put it in one way. As you can see the hole lines up, but if I flip the board, it does not line up. So we're not worried about labeling it for orientation or up and down because it only go in one way. So now I guess I'm just going to try to install it on a prepared top loader. Like I said, I've already desoldered the original rear panel. Two screws and uh, desoldered those two blobs for that. And I have, of course, a new power port connector. Uh, I, let's see, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I got the right part number here, but I got a bunch of these from Mauser. I think that's the right one. 163-7620. The 2.1 sounds right. And it's got it's got almost the exact perfect shape for the new board. See, it fits in that square almost like it was made for it. So, probably screw this down and then line that up and solder it just to make sure it's in there correctly. Okay, so mount panel. I'm curious. Oh, and uh, these came with a third leg on the side, and I just cut it off. It's just a duplicate leg, basically. Since these systems are AC, 
doesn't it doesn't matter the polarity or anything. Hmm. I might actually have to. I guess I just loosen it a little bit to get it to feed through there. Yeah. Definitely gonna have to hold it somehow. Mm. Need a third hand. Hey, that's pretty much how it's going to be. I don't know why, but I've seen this a few times where people take out these screws and feed them from the top down. I guess they don't understand that this rear panel is kind of like the nut, and you're sandwiching the PCB. There's no threads in, or anything in the PCB so they have to be threaded from the bottom same thing with the uh, heat sink the two main screws for the heat sink seen them, seen them upside down as well no idea why but it does happen so now all I have to do is remove the two screws for the panel And it'll just slide right off or fall off. Yeah. Just like that. Of course, I got a screw for the holes of the PCB, so once it's soldered to the wires, I, mean, I can leave them soldered to the in the SRGB and just take that screw out and voila! That'll be really easy to uh, work on. I guess the one slight hiccup here is that you will have to remove the rear panel to get the circuit board to come out at all. As this is going to slide back and hit the hit the uh, cartridge connector and not be able to come all the way out. It's about halfway out like that. Not a big deal though. Not a big deal and uh, unavoidable, but just take one of the screws out and it'll swing away plenty far enough to get to it to get it wired up also somebody posted uh, these holes right here are perfect for a, uh, a dual row header which you can get a uh, ribbon cable clamp for and it'll just fit right down on there and you can solder the headers down and that way you can just slide on the, slide it onto the post and there you have it easy to remove and everything but I try to avoid as many connections as possible and try to do solid solder connections as much as possible. So for that reasoning I wouldn't mind having just one line of holes to easier solder my ribbon cable to. But whatever, I'll make it work. Well here's what it looks like with a mess of wires soldered to it. Good thing is you can bend these all the way around and not have to worry about them touching each other like you would with the Super Nintendo connector. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, get a final shot for you. Okay, here it is all buttoned up and I noticed one last issue is I got an alignment issue. It seems like it's uh, that way a little too far. You can see the edge sticking out there and over here not sure how I'd get that on the camera, but yeah. See the back edge right there? It's almost like the whole panel is shifted that way some. And I'm not real sure how because the AC ports lined up perfectly. You know, and the screw holes on the circuit board don't have a lot of play in them. 
and normally I'd take it apart and try to fiddle with it, but the owner of this is going to take it off anyway to paint it, so maybe he can play with the alignment just a little bit there and see if it'll move over. I'm not real sure why it did that. So, let's plug it in. So yeah, I'm uh, plugging it in for the first time, and honestly, that beveled edge that I was talking about earlier, I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll really make, but it might help it some. I don't know, it's really not that bad. Well, there it is running, Abidox. Uh, one thing I will say is because of the cost and the way it's made, I'm not real sure we have room for much switch action. I'm not sure I'd want to put a hole in something I paid that much money for, but I think they, uh, was it Helder? He did squeeze in a pallet switch in there. Now, I can't even get my finger between my retro console accessory SCART cord and the power cord, so I'm not really sure I'd put it there anyway, and same with over here. There's just not much room. Maybe if they move this over, they could uh, make room for the switches over there a little easier. Um, obviously you're still able to put them in different places like over here or whatnot. But uh, there you go. So, oh yeah, this one's... So there's no switch, so there's no pallet switch. So this one's wired for the natural pallet all the time. Um, eventually we'll get the uh, switchless mod going. There is one that uses the reset button and then I believe Tim is working on one that will use the controller itself and uh, when that happens we'll either upgrade uh, upgrade this one with one of them that will work because uh, I think the one that Tim is working on will probably be part of a board revision and it's not just something some firmware that I could flash to this one to make it work this is still a, a batch 2 board but whatever, if we can get a, a switch reset mod going, that'll be fine. It'll save putting holes into the back of the top loader anyway.